Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and today with our sponsor Elisa, we are going to dye some yarn low immersion in this catering steam pan. This is a full size steam pan that is four inches deep and I can easily fit three skeins of yarn in here. Uh, we are across two burners on my stovetop and I love this sort of setup and I use it all the time. I feel like most frequently I am randomly applying the dye colors to the pan, but today we're going to do a more classic variegated colorway. We're going to have a really low level of water, and then we're going to add our color in sections on the yarn. I know I've done this technique in the past, but I feel like I do it more frequently in live streams than a dedicated Dye Pot Weekly episode, so I wanted to do this for all of you today. I am pre-soaking 300 grams of Knit Picks Swish DK yarn. This yarn is 100% Superwash Merino, and I love it. I have also added on reusable nylon zip ties to all of the yarn as an easy way to flip it during the dyeing process. If you would like to learn more about the bare yarn or any of the other materials I'm using today, you can find affiliate links in the video description. Today we are going to play with three different pre-mixed stock solutions in Dharma Avocado, Pecan Brown, and Espresso Bean. I think these three hues go so well together. The avocado does break a bit, and I think that the color also shifts a little bit once you get some heat. But I love this saturated kind of colorway that we have here, and I'm really excited to apply it to the yarn. I diluted the dye so we have three 0.5% stock solutions. I mixed one half of a cup of the dye with one half of a cup of water. And I did this to allow me to spread out the color a little more with a little more ease. I can still build up the color and add just as much volume and amount of the dye as I would have otherwise, but by diluting it, that'll let me uh, get more coverage right away than if I was going straight from the stock solution bottles. Not to mention that these stock bottles have teeny, teeny, tiny holes, which only allow a little bit of color to come out at one time. I'm actually going to use some large syringes to apply the dye today. The holes are still pretty small, but I can change the rate a little easier than I can with the squeeze bottles, and so I have a slightly more control. I gently squeezed out most of the water from the pre-soak, so that way I can replace the water back with some acid. Here I have about two and a half cups of our pre-soak water with two tablespoons of white vinegar. And you can see adding that in that though this is still not enough, we definitely want more water volume in our pan. I'm reusing the pre-soak water because why not? I don't need the water level to be too, too high because we are going to be adding more volume in here as we add our dyes. So I am aiming for a nice low level, but I think that I can be fairly happy with adding uh, the four more cups. So a total of six and a half cups of water with two tablespoons of white vinegar. I could have gone lower, I definitely could have gone lower, but you can see that the fiber soaks up a lot of that color, and now I'm just sort of distributing it so we can start heating things up. Because our burners are here and here, we won't get the most even heat in here, but we can still get some pretty even color coverage. And you can see I'm adding on this color, which at being, you know, less of being a half percent DOS, still looking rather pigmented. And I'm able to add it to the section. We are still going to get some variation in here. There will be some tonal variation in these sections, but I'm okay with that. And to be honest, 
I really enjoy that. I'm going to bring this color up a bit higher. Now this color that I'm adding right now is not going all the way through to the other side. And yes, I did get some drips of it in here and I'm just going to spread that out a little bit so it is a little less pigmented. If I move the yarn a bit, there, you can see we've got some paler color down there, but the coverage and the spread is pretty good. But this is why we will be flipping the yarn and adding color to the other side, eventually. Okay, I'm now coming in with our avocado color. Going back and forth. And yeah, I'm glad I diluted the color because if I didn't, uh, then it would be more pigmented already, but I wouldn't be able to spread it as far. Um, so I think that this will be really, really beautiful overall. And I'm gonna come in and especially paying attention to those edges, add more of this color in. Now the more color I add right now, the higher the water level is going to go, um, which means that colors might spread more down into other sections. So I really could have started with less water overall, but as time goes on, we will be reducing the amount of water that we have in here. And I'm using my spoon, oh, there you can really see some white. Um, I'm using my spoon to help distribute this color down through the yarn. But for a color like this, where we can see it's not going really deep, I can actually inject it a bit. Now we can't really control what's happening beneath the yarn and so how far down that color is going, which is why it might be better to flip and move the yarn around to add color for a little more control. But there is, you know, again, no reason why we can't just go in and inject some of this color now. I'm checking in on our first color. There is a lot of color in here. You might notice that I started at the ends, and that is because I prefer to have the colors layer on top of one another on the yarn versus the colors mixing in advance. If the colors mix together before they hit the yarn, then we're definitely going to get a blend, but it'll be, a, I don't know, I just prefer um, layering the colors on the yarn itself. And I know we haven't flipped things yet, but I can go ahead and look at the bottom and add some pigment there now, just because I can. And I'm actually gonna bring this green down a tiny bit more. The nice thing with the amount of dilution that I did with these colors is that it's really going to be easy for me to reproduce um, this if I need to mix more of, say, the green or the purple, I will definitely be able to do that. I was going to just go and sit and wait, but we may as well, just so that way we can see the tone, add some brown on right now, but I'm not going all the way to the edge for the reasons I discussed. I just wanted to see that tone. Now obviously we could leave some white in here, but I am going to, uh, that's not my plan for today. But now I'm going to let everything sit for 10 minutes so we can absorb this color. Elisa, I am so happy with the way these colors are coming together. We still definitely have some color here, but most of it has actually bound. We need to be careful because we do not want to flip 
too soon because we don't want the color to wash over everything. The green is pretty good. Um, that's sort of what we're looking for. But let's go ahead and add our brown on now. All of the tools and equipment that we are using today are dedicated for dyeing and are not used for food. I'm sort of approaching the edge with care. And you can actually see there is a bit of a tonal difference already from where I added the dye at first to where I had added some before. And I am shimmying here to help the dye go down to other layers. But we don't want to leave this pastel edge and it is okay if some of the colors end up on top of one another. It's just things are so pigmented overall that this line over here is going to be really subtle. Espresso bean is technically like advertised as a brown, but it definitely reads more purple to me overall. Now I'm coming in here, trying to stay mostly in our brown region, but also wanting to make sure that we have good coverage and overlap with the green so we're not leaving any like mega pastel sections in there and again you know we can see areas already and since we're at sort of this middle interface level I am okay coming in and even if I'm not sort of injecting that color it's not a problem to add some to that interior portion right now. And I'm even gonna come in here and sort of inject some of this color down, focusing on these edges more than, say, the area close to where I had just added that brown. And again, I am pressing, sort of moving that color through. It is a good thing that this yarn is super washed because I am handling it to move that color through. Um, but in a little bit we will flip and add color to that other side. Just want to make sure that what we see now has good coverage. And as we start this next 10 minute waiting period, I am going to add, just sort of sprinkling a little bit of vinegar onto the surface doing about two more tablespoons, uh, maybe a little more total. Um, this is because we are increasing, I still pro have probably about half of the dye that I mixed at the beginning, but we are definitely changing our water level, which changes the acid concentration. And I am just sort of going through again and gently Mixing, I have some water off the side where I am tapping my spoon as I move things around. Oof, I love that green. Okay, we'll be back in 10 minutes. I decided to wait 20 minutes to let even more of that color absorb. And now, if I can look, there might be some slight color, but basically everything has absorbed. So now we can flip the yarn, and you can see immediately when I lift this up, how much color did not get all the way through. Um, so we will need to pay attention and we might need to flip again because as I pull up some of these areas, you can see on that front side there's even some areas where we did not get uh, the same amount of pigmentation. The greens though honestly did pretty well because I lifted up that edge and added some color there. So, do, do, do. trying to arrange this in the pan so that way things are approximately in the same position so that way we can go across in lines again. And once again, I am going to start 
with the ends, wait and let that set, and then come back and do the middle. Sometimes I might do some more injecting within the skein um, versus just laying it on top and shimming it around. Um, but that is my plan. And I am going to go ahead and speed this up into a time lapse. The yarn was not super, super hot, so I was able to use my fingers to move some of the colors aside. We are definitely seeing some breaking in that avocado color, and I started to use it up, so I knew that I would need to mix some more in the future. The colors are striking pretty quickly, so if you want to slow down the rate that the colors are absorbing to the yarn, use less acid. Um, that will allow you to help spread the color out even more. However, again, I like some tonal variation. And even as we are starting to use up some of these half percent stock solutions, I know that I will be going back in and I can mix up a little more, even if it's one tablespoon of color, I can mix up some more uh, so that way I can spot check after we let this level of color set completely. When I got to using up this first round of browns, I both did and did not want to move the yarn around a lot. And that's because I didn't want the brown to blend with the other colors. But I know that I will need to do another round of color coverage um, just to keep these hues that I want and to check for areas that are too, too, too pastel. Um, obviously, you could stop here if you wanted. Those white patches are beautiful, but we're going for this pigmented variegated color line. I waited 15 minutes before I flipped the yarn again and mixed up some more dye with mixing our 1% stock solutions, half of the stock, half water, um, to layer on some more color. Don't forget that we have 300 grams of yarn in our pan today, which is a lot more crowded. If we had 200 grams or even 100 grams of yarn in here, things would be spread out more and we would be able to get more coverage right away. But, you know, and you can inject more and you can add more water volume on different sections and let it absorb completely. There's many different variations you can do that will end, you, end up with you arriving in a similar place. At the end, I would go through and spot check, which means that I would move the yarn, look for light spots, and add more color. Okay guys, let's flip this again and do like a final kind of check. Cause see, I see a couple of spots here. I guess last time I not have the green spread out quite as much. Now I am out, oh goodness, of the brown. So this is what I am going to do. I am just going in now with my stock solution, adding some drops and layering that on. We've got different levels of pigmentation anyway. So I don't think it'll be super problematic. I actually have a bit more of the espresso bean. So I am also just layering that in, checking, oh goodness, for some light spots, just to leave no dye behind. And oy, there was a spot. Okay, I am feeling really, really satisfied with the color. And again, if you have less acid in here to begin with, the colors can spread more. Colors will strike to superwash yards a little faster than non-superwash ones. Avocado is a really interesting color, and we absolutely have multi-dimensional tone in those greens. There's some more yellows and browns from the avocado color. Now we want everything to bind. So I'm coming through and just adding some vinegar and I'm going to let everything sit for another 15 minutes on medium to low heat. The colors have mostly completely absorbed, but I am going ahead and adding a little bit more water as I turn off the heat. 
This is allowing the yarn to move a little more freely and allowing other parts of these colors to soak up that residual color. I'm gonna leave the yarn in here to cool for a while. Um, eventually I might remove it, but once the yarn is cool, then we can go and wash it. So I'll see you in a little while. The water is completely clear as we now go to wash our low immersion dyed yarn. And this yarn feels so foresty to me. I am really excited. And we're seeing no bleeding, which is awesome. There are definitely some tonal variations in here, but again, we kept the water level really low throughout. And I'm now adding to this so. So with this kind of technique, you can do smaller sections of color because the colors aren't going to spread out very much. The water level is so low. Alright, I'm seeing a tiny bit of bleeding. It's sad. Um, so I'm going to keep rinsing until we can get the water to run clear. Uh, I'm not expecting it to be super problematic, but if I notice a significant amount of bleeding or it doesn't stop in a couple rinses, and then I'll pop back and let y'all know. After a few more rinses, let's check in. That is looking pretty clear. So I'm now gonna go put the yarn through my spin dryer and hang it up to dry, and we'll come back and take a closer look at our finished dry foresty yarn. Ooh, Elisa, this is beautiful. I really hope that you're gonna love this mystical forest colorway. I just love how earthy it is with the purple and the brown and the green. This green, I think it was avocado, but it definitely breaks. You can see like some pops of this more yellowy brown color in here and I don't hate it. I think if I was doing a colorway that was more cool toned and maybe I was going from this green through a teal to a blue, I would be annoyed. But with this brown and then the brownish purple, it works. It feels like moss um, coming in through the leaves or leaves starting to change for fall or something like that. Ooh. Clearly, you can see that we have a lot of tonal variation with these colors. Even uh, with me, you know, trying to shimmy things around as I added it, the colors were still striking pretty quickly. I think that maybe in the future I should try, if I want the colors to be a little more even, which wasn't exactly what I was going for, but if I wanted them to be more even, I would increase the water level a little bit and also decrease the amount of acid that I had in there. And if I could add our dye on with a greater liquid at a time, so maybe dilute the dye further, then you can start to get more even coverage. But I'm super thrilled, super, super thrilled with how this turned out. Elisa, thank you so much for sponsoring this episode of Dye Pot Weekly. I really hope that you are going to enjoy this colorway. And oh, I'm just so excited because I love it so much. Anytime I start going and playing with color combinations I haven't done before, I get really, really excited. And yeah, I am just so excited to explore more color combinations uh, as we move into 2020. The Kenneth's Creations Etsy shop is filled with dozens and hundreds, really, skeins of hand-dyed yarn featured in my videos. And you really should go check it out. A skein of yarn from the shop would be a perfect holiday gift for the biggest Chemnitz fan in your life. You can find a link to my Etsy shop in the video description and iCard. Don't forget to subscribe and press that bell icon to turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. New videos come out on Tuesday and Friday mornings at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time. And, well, the Hanukkah special is coming up. So starting on December 22nd, there will be a new video every night of Hanukkah, plus some bonuses beyond. 
and you really don't want to miss it. I think we're going to end 2019 on a really high note and I cannot wait for you to see what I've created. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and thank you so much for watching.